entrance is only if you walk through the hallway navigating it properly. So if you live this or right life in this world, you will find that beautiful world to come in, in the next world. And so preparation is so important. And that's why the ninth petition is so important as well. So let's talk a little bit about what we're going to do on Tuesday, the ninth of Tishrei. Well, for one thing, what you should be doing, if you haven't yet, is to annul your vows. Annulling vows is often done by taking three friends and getting them together and saying a certain, um, a certain formula. I don't believe the formula is in the prayer book. I believe it was in the prayer book of the, uh, it's not here. It's, it's the Rosh Hashanah prayer book, right? Because it was really done before Rosh Hashanah. Uh, if you don't get a chance to do it, rest assured that it will be done in the synagogue on Yom Kippur night. It'll be done with a prayer call called, called Nidre. Nidre, the word neder, means a vow, the breaking of vows or the annulment of vows. And Hashem allows us to do that uh, as a method of say, teaching us how to control what we say uh, and to make sure that you're careful when you make a promise and we often said that to use our friend Billy Billy Netta, right? Mm -hmm. right? <laughs> so to give you an out but uh, but we really should be careful about it and um, and just in case you may have made mistakes and, and we're quick at the mouth we need to, to make an atonement for that. And Hashem gives us this process called the annulment of the vows. But it has to be in front of a bed din. A bed din is three people. So on Yom Kippur night, Kol Nidre will require the following procedure. Two persons, maybe rabbis, go up to the ark and take the Torah and bring it over here to the beam. One will hold the Torah here and the other will hold the Torah over here. And in the middle will be the Chazan. And those are the three that comprise the Bedin. And they will know the vow for us with this formula, this legal formula. Why is it important particularly now? Because probably most of the sins that we do do are with the mouth and probably saying nasty things or uh, maybe cursing or maybe yelling or maybe anger or maybe lying or maybe slandering, that's pretty bad, the slander stuff, you know, and lush and horror, and, um, um, and, and stuff like that. Uh, oftentimes, another a very pro prohibited mode of speech is a, a speech called um, uh, excessive joking. Excessive joking is inappropriate. That's good to have a good laugh, it's good to have a, 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 a pleasant, uh, uh, you know, a, a way of, of maybe sharing a message, but, um, where it becomes excessive with everything's all comedy, right? That's not really a proper use of, of, uh, of your life. And so all these things we're going to annul for, annul, uh, 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 and, and receive, uh, 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 ask Hashem for forgiveness, because we're going to be using more than any other uh, organ in our body, we're going to be using the mouth on the before when there's repentance and the and so, so we're gonna uh, we're gonna use our mouth all of them support. If it's all we do all day, it's praying. Can you pray with your mouth? Yes, you pray with your heart too, but you do have to verbalize. We're gonna learn that verbalization is essential. We're gonna learn that the shiva, repentance, changing, becoming better, is and becoming a different person, and becoming uh, one who's pleasing to Hashem will be achieved by regret, resolve, and confession. Regret correct means I made a lot of mistakes. And if someone can't realize that, the mistakes they made, <laughs> I don't know if I was going to go through it. It's my point. And I mean, my list is this large. So, uh, so you, you begin to uh, regret, and you have to regret, I'm really sorry, I'm really sorry. Really, really sorry I made this foolish mistake, said this thing, um, uh, hurt someone, wasn't careful, uh, whatever. Uh, and then I resolved it. I'm going to be different. I'm going to be more careful. I'm going to be perfect, but I'm not. If you really aren't, I'm going to be better. And that's the idea of true body. But the key to making it real is verbalization. 
what you do in the verbal life, you confess. We are confessing to you. I think every human being, very, very private, very personal, you're looking at the mirror, but you can touch. In so doing, um, we, we, we touch our hearts, as I said. And when you touch your heart, by the way, don't bang it. <laughs> otherwise, it might get hurt. <laughs> but rather, it's sensitive to indicate that the reason I made the mistake was because of my heart. I wasn't in my head. I was in the emotion. I was foolish. I caught up in the argument. Mm -hmm. So basically, the question here indicates that Sam understands I really wasn't using my head. I really wasn't using my head. And I promise you that. Yes. In terms of that. And that's how we, how we, how we verbalize. We're going to do that a, a, a lot this morning. And I'm going to show you in just a moment. In any event, so that's the beginning of Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur, yeah, but must begin while it's still daylight, at least 10 minutes before the sunset. And the reason for that is because, inasmuch as the annulment arouses a legal formula for the legal bed din, none of that can occur on a Shabbat or a holiday. Bed din never convenes on a holiday, bed din never convenes on a Shabbat. We have to always suspend all our legal matters anyway. And so, therefore, uh, you want to do that at home, the guys, you got to be there in the synagogue 10 minutes before sunset. That's in cold winter beginnings. Um, and then we uh, uh, have the formula. And once the formula is done, it's about a 10 minute prayer, really. In fact, in a prayer, it's, it's like I said, it's a legal formula that that time the rabbis will bring us slowly back to the, to the ark. And then there'll be a little bit of a break. And people who are studying then, or maybe the rabbi gives a speech then, and I'll show exactly what we're going to do during that period of that, that, that moment of break. Because at the sunset, it's too early to say the evening prayer. So there's about at least a 20 to 30, maybe 40 minute of interlude um, before the services commence, uh, depending on the shul that you go to. Um, during the day of Yom Kippur, it's on the 9th of Tishrei, that's Tuesday, A, you want to know your vows if you can, one of three friends beforehand. If you can't, you got to rely on the service uh, on the people night. Also, you want to eat a lot. So, those getting breakfast or lunch or dinner, you got to eat. It's eat. Um, many belt that you should do a lot of snacking in between as well. It's not really terrible for diet. But I know rabbis that are so careful <coughs> with this mitzvah. They have sucking candy in their mouth all day. And it's one candy, put another. But one candy, put another. <laughs> Just to make sure they're eating as much as possible. Because remember, that eating is considered fasting. Because you're preparing for your fast with the eating, therefore it's considered if you fasted two days. So really our time of Kippur observance begins on Tuesday. Going into Tuesday night, of course. But Tuesday night, let's say, it's early because as I said, the meal, the main meal of Yom Kippur, is um, the uh, meal, the dinner beforehand. Uh, it's got to start, I can't think any later than 4.30, uh, quarter to five max, because you got to be done by six. And then uh, by the time you're done, then you, of course, light candles and run off to the shul. And um, uh, if you're going by car, which is good, maybe you leave your car there as well. Uh, and get there quicker, perhaps, but you should be in shul at 6 10. And my assumption is 6 10 on Tuesday night. Other things to consider on uh, Tuesday. Uh, another thing that's of, of significance is um, that um, you do want to do a ceremony called kaparot. Now, in years past, if you remember, uh, we did a kaparot here with chickens. And it's a wonderful kind of minhai, it's a wonderful custom. Uh, I won't be able to do it this year, uh, but if you can find some place for chickens, then you should go and find it. Now, if you look at the chicken, the chicken will look at you and say, Thank you for using me for a mitzvah. And the chicken will be so happy when it's slaughtered and so happy when it's being eaten. However, the real mitzvah kaparot is to slaughter the chicken and to give it to the poor. If you can't do that, I know that the, 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 the Persian rabbi on the Ventura, the Woodland Hills, that is doing that. He's in the job of doing uh, He does it every year uh, and does slaughter the chicken for you. That's something to watch. And um, 
And it's a, it's a wonderful thing because uh, once he does the mitzvah of uh, slaughtering the chicken, we talked about how slaughter does it properly, make sure that it's kosher. There's one mistake, it becomes non kosher. Um, uh, once he does it and the blood squirts out, so there's a mitzvah to cover the blood. That's called kisu hadam. That makes it very important so that you get a chance to do it and make it a bracha. So you pick up some dirt in your hand, dust, dirt, hold it in your, in your, in your hand. Once the slaughtering is done and you see the blood starting to drip into the ground, you make the bracha, bracha to Hashem, you came in the Haram, Shaykh Kishan, and you come to Sivan, you see that down for Afar, and you go on and you give it to Yeah? And maybe every sound very strange to people. Have you heard of this? Have you have done this before? It sounds so weird. Uh, well, putting them so you is equally as weird. Everything we do is weird if you want to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but the idea of this mitzvah is the mitzvah saying, I want to be sensitive to blood, sensitive to life, which simply means that as I cover the blood, yes, the, the, the chicken has to be slaughtered. Just like uh, all life has to end. And uh, but if it's done the proper way, it gives the sanctity and holiness and, uh, and remains sensitive and not bloodthirsty or, uh, or insensitive to, to, to human life and the cruelty. And so, therefore, the broth is made, the blood is covered, and then. Uh, the chicken are usually given away to the poor, and what you do, of course, is you give money. Uh, Baba Louis takes money from you, and you give 18, 36, 64 multiples of chai if you want, plus multiples of white, 18, or give anything you want at all just to make sure the poor get. Because one of the most important is to this day is the list of tzedakah. Why tzedakah? Why charity? Because we said before Rosh Hashanah, we say it again now. There are three things. And avert the evil decree. What are those three things? Shuba, Shiva, Shustaka. Right? So, Shuba, we we'll talked about that. Regret, resolve, confession. Shiva, you know, all day. How are you going to manage, Mike? How are you going to manage? Round, round the circle. So, Shuba, uh, Shiva, uh, and then, but stop, you can't do it, you know, keep war. You can't touch money. What are you going to do? Stuff the day before. And a lot of people uh, do write out a lot of their checks. If you have a, a institutions that you want to help, or you know some needy people that need some help and so forth, that's a good time to do it. I also might say that um, that and Yom Kippur, uh, generally speaking, we, on the day before Yom Kippur, there was not a mincha service in the shul at a regular time. The mincha service is usually midday, somewhere around three o'clock. That time, we're coming to the shul, three o'clock in the afternoon. We're just going to do mincha alone, not mincha not yet. When you do mincha alone, uh, you will find that the beam will be covered by little plates of uh, with, with the name of the institution on it, or the name of the stucco, name of the yeshiva, name of an orphanage, name of, uh, of, of a uh, free soup kitchen, name of all different kinds of, of, of organizations that help in the needy. And you drop a few dollars into one of these plates. That's when you give it stuck up on the day before the uh, If you're not able to get to the, to, to the synagogue at that time, so then and the, the best thing to do is probably to uh, just earmark it yourself. If you get it, if you're lucky enough to get all those uh, envelopes in the mail, so that from Israel, then, then you know when you give it to them. Um, envelopes look a little bit like this. <laughs> but, yeah. but this is it, it, um, you know, a block on a chair. <laughs> but 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 it, it, it Abby just took it all over. I mean, uh, the Tom Cheshavis um, in Los Angeles has to provide maybe multiple thousands of families in our community that really can't afford food shops. So a, a stock at the end is very worthwhile. In fact, you may find in one of the grocery stores that you buy, if you purchase, you'll find a pushka. Right, you find a little box. Uh, 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 please give your uh, extra change to me to the poor uh, and make sure that they have what to eat. Um, there are many other very worthwhile organizations 
Los Angeles has a big Chaylum. You know, big Chaylum is a is a uh, organization dedicated to healing the sick, in which uh, many many people use the big Chaylum Society for referrals for the right doctor uh, to the uh, to get the right prescription. They can afford prescriptions. Um, the, a lot of a lot of good benevolent charitable work goes on amongst us. Of course, you all know that there's also Hatzal. Hatzal is uh, Jewish 911. And you know that they come uh, quickly, uh, rain or shine, day or night, we care shops. In fact, uh, when I had my heart attack, he was there for me within about five or 10 minutes before he was arrested. I know when he came. That's all the guys were there. And, um, and then actually, that's all the guys uh, were, were very good. And another fact to do with me, because um, I was a little disoriented, so in the, uh, in the, in the paramedics, when they asked me if I was alive, I was alive, I was alive. I wanted to know if I was conscious or not. So they asked me, they asked me, what's my name? So I said, it's me. They couldn't figure it out for life. And then, <laughs> then they asked me, what is today? And I said, Shabbos. <laughs> they couldn't, what is he saying? So first of all, they held out. And then the, and then the, 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 the paramedics asked me, who's the president? I was Obama. I said, an idiot. They said, he's great. <laughs> <laughs> you know what he's talking about. <laughs> but it is an incredibly important organization. An important organization in Saski. Saski provides chairs, you know, small chairs for the mourners. And this is going to make the mourners a share of the uh, prayer books, uh, various other meals for the, for the mourners. And, and these are really worth all over the place to be involved and to find out what, what's being done beautifully and benevolently throughout our city. Um, so Tzedakah is a main fear feature of Tuesday as well. Yeah, we got in places and still set the money aside. Do the act, send the money aside, and you can always distribute later on. I actually set some money aside on Tuesday. So you're going to be doing a lot of eating, and you're going to do, if you can't do the ceremony with the chickens, so do with money as well. That's also well, and, and you should find a ceremony actually in the prayer book. You can find it on page. Something done there? Very beginning. Page four? Oh, page three. Page, uh, page two. Yeah, page two is the end of the, is, is the page two is the um, the uh, the introductory paragraph to read, and then page four is the various people that are going to read books. I have no more sorry. Sorry, you check out the look at something. Um, so um, that's how you make the, 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 uh, the ceremony. Anyway, uh, and again, just like you would uh, take the chicken over your head, you do the um, you do the money over your head the same way. Uh, over three times. And that's uh, and that's uh, another part of the day. Um, as we said, Mincha. Sudaka, Mincha, three o'clock in the afternoon. Busy day, doing this, doing that. Hard to get any work done. Most people don't. Most people there. And then they go to Mincha at three o'clock and said, and they find the supper plates over here. And then something very interesting happens. The Mincha of Vidu. A religious word. Vidu. Now, we talked about Vidu and getting those booklets. Uh, anyone else bought this one? Buy those booklets yet? Here's one of these. Please try and get one of these. They're really great. They're great companions for, for, the, um, for the service of Drop the Day of Yom Kippur. The way of the way of new confession. It's very accurate. It's very elaborate. It's very meaningful. And uh, instead of saying words, you know what you're doing when you say this. And it's not foolish. Uh, <clears throat> so please get one of these booklets. And they're all over all, of, all of the stores. And you can even get them, they're probably running like hotcakes um, uh, at, the, at the different stores that are this week, particularly today. And so, <clears throat> the Vidui. Um, the Vidui is the confession. Confession is the essence of the truth. In other words, confession meaning verbalize. Say, I did this. I did this. You do that, any event for you, to bring it out to the world. But keep it inside uh, because you have to admit that she's the mission. Um, on the other hand, it's also provided, it's helpful. It, 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 it 
does, it does bring a lot of comfort to the soul. I mean, I have to sort of say what we need to say. And, uh, and then, of course, there's this uh, confession to others on a personal level. That means people need to ask each other for forgiveness. But I'm not sure I did anything. I'm not sure I did anything. Did anything to forgive me. So now you remember that six months ago when you spoke slander about this guy. Six months ago, you told me you said this nasty thing about this person. And uh, <clears throat> you remember it. And um, when I go to the guy and ask him for forgiveness. So we go in and we say, you know, six months ago, I slandered you. What did you do, you dirty bum? You slandered me? The reactions are the exact opposite. Don't be specific. Just say, I did something. They have done something. I really am sorry if I did anything. Please forgive me. Be gentle. Don't elicit a negative response. Elicit a positive response. And uh, people should be willing and, 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 and open to forgiveness. Now, there are people that we sometimes resent. Lots of people who resent. Uh, maybe long gone, enemies, maybe over the years, whatever. Um, and it's no one's really required to become the best friends with people with the kind of issues, with, but you do have to at least atone for the mistakes you made. I raised my voice. I was foolish. Yeah, you did that, that, and that, but I'm not worse than what you did. I mean, what I did. I was old. I was inappropriate. And that, that's where the, the sense of admission comes. But that's got to be done on a personal level. Well, you're in shul. Uh, some people take that 40 minute interlude in the evening to ask each other for forgiveness. They do that. And you cheat, it's all done. So you, you, got, you got to watch people going from one to the other. And everyone's going to each other just asking for forgiveness throughout the entire period. And uh, be awful careful, awful careful with, with, with their responses, awful careful the way they treat each other. The Dharma teaches if you do not get forgiveness from your friend, for a social mistake that you made, God will not forgive you. If you did something against Hashem, you ate you know, non kosher, you didn't keep Shabbos, you didn't put the mezuzah up, you uh, forgot to pray, you did this wrong, that wrong, I'm asking Hashem to forgive you for your But if you spoke much and hard about something, or you yelled at someone, or you hurt someone's feelings, she will not forgive and then she has to forgive this person. Now, if the person you're asking is not going to be forgiving, you do your best. Some say you should try three times. Um, again, try your best. But there has to be that sense of uh, an attempt to restore the situation uh, uh, on some personal level uh, before you keep going. And so, <clears throat> And so, uh, yeah, you want to ask something? No. No, okay. So, so uh, therefore, uh, I'm stealing this one. <laughs> I forget to do this. So, therefore, you want to be able to, to um, uh, spend some time. Now, um, again, I said, if it was someone that's far away, maybe you make a phone call, maybe person's in New York, wherever. But the point is, if you want to, you, you, you want to um, be general, you don't want to be specific. And uh, then there's a prayer that we're going to say during that 40 minute interview or 20 minute whatever, after the moment of vows, and that's called Zakha. Zakha is purification. Zakha has a specific paragraph in it where you can offer forgiveness to anyone who ever hurt you. And hopefully, everybody's doing it. So if everybody's doing it, then everybody's offering forgiveness, we're all forgiven. So, therefore, and I'm going to show you this prayer this morning. It's a very, very important prayer. Anyway, so now you come home and get ready for Yom Kippur by having the last meal. The last meal should be festive and filling. Generally speaking, we do not eat meat, we eat chicken. It's a little bit easier to digest. Uh, <clears throat> We save the mozi for the meal, but not over two chalot because it's not holiday, technically. 
It's still the day before. So you only have one challah, and there's no kiddush. And now we begin by adding a little bit of time to the Yom Kippur from borrowing it from Tuesday. So in other words, before Tuesday ends, Yom Kippur will begin already. We take a little bit of extra time, a little extra 10 minutes. And by this doing this, we have taken the entire Yom Kippur holiness and attributed it to the whole week before. And we learn from this, this was every Friday. Every Friday, why do we light candles 18 minutes before the sunset? To add a little bit of time from the week to the Shabbat. By doing so, we've taken the holiness of Shabbat and extended it to the week beforehand. So, after Shabbat's over, we wait a little longer to the end, right? Shabbat. At that point, what do we do? We then um, add a little bit of the Shabbos to the coming week. So the whole week becomes filled with some measurement, some degree of sanctity from the holiday or from Shabbat, whatever it may be. But that's why we begin early. So once again, I say to you, <clears throat> Mincha is around three o'clock in the afternoon. And we're going to do something very strange at Mincha. We're going to say the Vigui, the confession, even before Yom Kippur begins. In the Mincha of the afternoon, on Tuesday afternoon. And if your women not going to shul, then sure you say your mincha sometime around that time. And in a confession as well. We're going to look at confession in just a moment. But in the confession, remember this. Why do we add confession before the holiday begins? The answer is because they say, who never knows what might happen. You want to make sure you confess before you die. So then we have this confession on Mincha. Uh, <clears throat> then I go home, I've been eating all day, <clears throat> then go to the mikvah. Uh, the, uh, uh, I have uh, taken there my, my kaparos and my money, my tzedakah, and um, eating this festive meal should be festive and filled with, with the joy of, of upcoming of, of a, hol a holiday of Kippur, including dipping the apple or dipping the apple, the I mean. In the honey, you don't need the apple anymore. <clears throat> anyway, one more thing to do before you light the candles on Tuesday night, light a memorial candle. Now, a memorial candle is for those that have passed away, loved ones. Um, it's a 20 power candle. Five hours. Um, this candle. Uh, is lit by those who have lost loved ones, who they will be saying memorial for on your people day. If you haven't lost loved ones, you should light one anyway. Why? Because you need to have a candle that burns for the full 24 hours in your home. You need a full 24 hour candle. And the reason for this is because when you make Havdalah <coughs> on uh, Wednesday night, when it's over, you want to light your Havdalah candle from that candle that burns for 24 hours. You do not want to create a new fire. You want to take the fire or your Havdalah candle from the existing 24 hour candle that's in your, in your home. Then you can find, of course, these candles and glasses and cans all over the stores. Um, now we're ready to light the candles and ask everyone for forgiveness. Good thing to do for parents, that's their children. If your children, it's your parents. Uh, parents' blessing to their children is a blessing that says um, that the children should be written in the book of life. The heart should be directed towards Hashem with a good life, with a life of blessing. And uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful custom for parents to do fathers, mothers to their children. Time to go to shul and to do the Kol Nidre, which is found on page. Um, um, Midway is down on page 56. Actually, 58, sorry, 58. And I add to you one more point before we begin the service. That is the number five. There are five afflictions on this day. Even drinking, washing of any kind whatsoever, except up to the knuckles in the morning. You watch ceremony in the morning, up to the knuckles only. Maybe a little bit over on the eyes, if you're a little bit asleep. Other than that, 
You have to wash your hands, your face, or nothing. So to say that you'll keep us from bathing bathing is wrong. It's a bit of anything. Shabbat, you don't bathe. But you don't keep or over extra. Uh, also, a third prohibition is any form of lotions or oils or perfumes. A fourth prohibition is the prohibition of leather shoes. But I generally wear Yom Kippur shoes, shoes that are made out of anything but leather. No problem. That leather is not the issue. Shoes is the issue. Uh, part of it's so not a comfort as much, but you know, generally speaking, being barefoot is an expression of being sent into exile, so to speak. If I've done anything then this year that I'm sort of exiled for, I, I, I now I've gotten my atonement by wearing uh, no shoes or uh, non leather shoes. And of course, married couples may not be we have to together on on the uh, 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 keyboard. And now I think that the basis forbidden is even forbidden for married couples to sleep in the same bed. Um, so, What's the other number five? Basically, we pray three times a day. Shari, Mucha, Shari. Correct? If it's Shabbat or holiday, I'll do an extra prayer called Mucha. The only day of the year, which I have a fifth prayer, is in the Elah on your people. We pray five times. I will pray the regular evening service, starting Tuesday night. Into Wednesday morning, Shachar into the south, into um, uh, Wednesday, um, uh, Wednesday afternoon uh, to Mukha, and then as it stayed, draws to a close, we do the fifth and final uh, prayer called Neil. But the highlight of all these prayers is Vidur, confession. We started it. On Tuesday afternoon, before the Yom Kippur from Magat, we're going to do it twice Yom Kippur night, Tuesday night, twice Shacharit Wednesday morning, twice from Musaf, twice from Mincha, and a bridged one with the Nikiva at the end of the, the day. And we're going to now take a look at what confession is all about. Now, I've said again, you really want to do it right? Get one of these. So, we have a confessional that is found on page 92. During the recitation, and you can look at the, the, the instructions on top. During the recitation of confession, one should stand with head and body slightly bowed. In a confessional mode. Um, submissive. Um, there is a section in the prayer book that makes it, that, that, that helps a little on 849. We won't look at just uh, that just yet. But um, then comes the second paragraph of 93. And there are 22 words being cited. And 22 times I will. Touch my heart. These 22 words represent um, these 22 words represent um, the letters of the alphabet. There are 22 letters in the alphabet. Alphabet, you know, dial, and so forth. Each word represents a letter going in the order of the alphabet. So I will confess something with the word alpha, in it. Now I can that's a word with that effect in it, a gimmel in it. Actually, that letter will be at the beginning of the word. So the words are we have become guilty, we've betrayed, we've robbed, we've spoken slander. Just look at the first four real easy. Guilty really means uh, a sense of self um, self uh, uh, harm. And that, that's what the real guilt is. Uh, the the, the self-harm includes things like uh, eating not kosher, uh, eating improperly, uh, eating without a bracha, uh, indulging in oneself 
in a physical manner that does something negative to your physicality. Um, uh, we have betrayed. Betrayed means basically I could have been doing something positive and instead I got busy with something in that sense. I could have been learning, I could have been praying, I could have been doing kindness, and I was watching a movie. Something like that. Um, we've robbed. Well, robbing not only means monetary, robbing also means when you uh, uh, really have to you entitled to something. I'm entitled to my opinion, or I'm entitled to my, uh, to argue with you, or I'm entitled to, uh, to, to, to take this from you. I'm entitled. A certain sense of entitlement is robbery. And D, uh, the next one, spoken slander, well, we know what that is. That's, that's quite, um, quite um, uh, self, self uh, explanatory. Uh, after we finish this paragraph, we continue with turned away from your commandments, admit that your good laws is no avail to us. You are righteous, all that have come upon us. You've acted truthfully. We have caused wickedness. What can we say? Follow me in the prayer book. You dwell on high. Well, how can we relate to you? Everything is hidden and revealed in front of you. It might be hidden to others, but you know it. You know the secrets of the universe. In mysteries of the living. You probe into thoughts, you test our thoughts and emotions. And that's where you really got to be personal with Hashem in terms of real, real, um, really um, honest. Nothing is hidden, nothing is concealed from Hashem. And may it be while Hashem's will, God and God of our forefathers, that you forgive us for our errors, pardon us for iniquities, and atone us for all willful sins. And that three sins over here errors, iniquities and willful sins. Take a look at these three words and tell me which is the worst of the three. An error, iniquity, let's say iniquity. Iniquity is a fancy word. Iniquity means um, I've been desirous. Uh, I was out of control. Uh, and then it's willful. So I got three sins here. I got errors, I got uh, desires, and I got willful. Name me the three, name me the, uh, these three, which is the worst? Both. Both. What about it? What about it? Name me the least uh, of all the sins. Error. And then the lust and the desire and the uh, uh, is in the middle. My Rebbe said, and you think about it, almost everything that we do that's wrong has awful components. Number one, I was using my head because I got too wrapped up in the heat. I got so passionate with this issue and I'm so angry. Well, so, I stopped thinking. so I'm not thinking, I'm making an error. Being um, desirous of lustful, I'm going to scream and yell at you and see, don't you know what God doesn't want this? It's when really everything we do for all these three issues. And that's the essence of all confession. The essence of all confessions is the error. I can control myself. I just didn't think about it. When you do that, you've got the essential message of cross. Now let's get specific. And Yom Kippur is all about specifics. Take a look at 94, 95. Take a look at 96, 97, and look at these and pick one that you want to relate to, and I'll explain it. Pick whichever one you want that you find inside that uh, you don't have this book. Sorry. Um, no, use this one. Let me show you that. Sorry. Okay. Um, I know it by heart a little bit. <laughs> But pick, pick whichever one that, 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 that touches you that you feel you want to be explained, and I'll see if I can explain it in, in, in the best way. Uh, something that, that really talks to you, I did this. Or maybe don't, 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 don't do that because that's embarrassing. It's something that's incriminating. <laughs> that's incriminating. <laughs> this is something that you feel is, is meaningful to you. So let's try it that way. And, um, and this way, I'll explain 
as much as I can for each and every one of them that you pick, what it really is implying. What's the real, the real message here? The real sense of what, 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 I, what really went wrong? What went wrong? I guess some of this is also very general, so they don't need to be specific. And that's what this, these are, these are the confessions are in fact specific. And again, there's, there's 44 of them. It's correct, 44 plus the n plus the extra 10. It's about 44 plus 10 because it's 22 times 2. It's the 44 specifics here. And it's not general like the, like the other one. It's a very specific, specific issue. And what really what, what you try to get is what's the character flow behind this? Why did this happen? And that's really the, 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 the confession which really makes a person really cleanse because then you really come to be a mistake. Um, that point of reference to say the first one. The first one says uh, willful and unwillful. Is that what it says? What's the first one say? Under duress and willingly. Say again. Under duress and willingly. Under duress and willing. willingly. Willingly. Well, so you think about it. There's a problem there. If you're under duress, then you're not doing willingly. If you're doing willingly, then you're under duress. Why do we put that all together? What he's trying to say the message in that is. That sometimes you really want to do something and you imagine that you're under duress, or perhaps you put yourself under duress. I really wanted to do this, and you know, I'm in a spot right now. Yeah, how'd you get into that spot? Right? <laughs> you put yourself in that spot, right? And I really, I'm under duress. Yeah, sure, you're under duress, but look, you got yourself under duress because you really wanted this in the first place. Look. You're driving the car, you're driving at uh, 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 high speed, and then they're, 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 you're really under duress because you, you, you got to get to the place on time. But frankly, <laughs> this wasn't that important for you to be prepared in the first place. That's why you're actually running around late. If, you were, if this was a job, this was a job interview for a million dollars a year, you know, said you'd be on time. You'd be there now in advance. But the way that's important to you, I mean, you didn't consider it that important. Therefore, uh, you put yourself under duress. It doesn't really, really, really care anyway. Something like that. Okay? That's a in depth for, uh, to get the perception of what the confession is all about. So somebody picks up. Who's the first? Who's the first? Okay, go ahead. The video you say. Oh, video you say. What's it say in English? Confession of the mouth. Uh, yeah. It's it's here. It's here. It's a concession of the mouth and not the heart. Right. That's your good one. So imagine, here I am confessing to God, and I confess in front of you that I'm insincere. You hear that? God, I confess to you that I am insincere. Whoa. Could you imagine that? Why am I insincere? Because I'm really not speaking. I haven't completely um, come up with a strategy to change. I haven't. I haven't done what I need to do to really make the changes I need to make. And that's why I'm insincere. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, <laughs> it's going to happen. <laughs> because to really have sincere confession is to, and I got to confess to that. I gotta confess. I have to, while I'm confessing to you, I confess to you that I'm insincere. <laughs> but that's honesty from God to God. That's the beauty of it. You're really honest. You see the beauty? You see, it's this real. I'm, I'm, I'm real with you, Hashem. I'm not playing games here. It's not, it's not, but don't keep losing other games. Don't keep losing your uh, Any other questions? Any other points to bring up? Anybody? I'll say, uh, yeah. yeah, the Bible yeah. one. I would say the, the definition is that I've sinned in the matter of extending a hand. Yeah, basically, basically, what it means is that I, no, I think what it means is, is that I have joined with 
uh, a lot of bumps. Saying the wrong people. That's right. Yeah. In other words, in other words, I joined, I saw a crowd doing this, and I just, the crowd said, uh, the, the crowd's all the, the, the looters are all throwing. You should say it's that the council of women. So. And the council of women, same thing. Yeah, and so basically, a, a lot of guys pull a lot of bad things, and I joined right in because I want to be part of the crowd. I just joined in. <laughs> that was it. So, and you have to confess that. Uh, why don't you stand up and be independent? Why don't you tell the, the rest of the people who are idiots and walk out? Which is it. A whole bunch of people stood around and said, We should be uh, mean to this group. Uh, we're racist. We don't like them. They have bombs. You didn't really feel that way, but you don't want to look out with funny, right? So you don't stand up and say something. Did you know, yeah. uh, could it be that you could just excuse yourself? You could covertly. Yeah, that, do you that, have to no, confront? You, no, you, you're right. You don't have to confront, especially if you're not going to get away with it. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> 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 oh, I've got to go to the bathroom too. <laughs> the reason, the reason, I, uh, and it uh, me a car. I think uh, the, uh, the reason why I'm asking is because of the cold at Mount Sinai. Yeah, right. Okay, I understand. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. So, so I mean, I mean, again, I mean, uh, you have to make a judgment. Some people may do tank away with, tank away with. But the point is, if you just can't stay put and participate, there is no excuse. There is no excuse. For the German people to have done what they did, whether they were benign or not. Well, I didn't really participate, I didn't really approve it. And you didn't pack out town, and you didn't meet, you stayed there while they were murdering Jews. Team. Now, my friend, I'm sorry. There's no such thing as, as even, even, even tacit uh, or unwilling attempt to support evil. Someone's doing something wrong, right? You got to, you, you can't uh, 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 protest, you get out. You say, it's get out. You, you can't stay and join in with wrongdoing. Um, uh, you're sitting in an executive meeting with your company and they want to fire this guy for this infraction, that infraction. You know it's untrue. You know, in fact, they, they're just getting after you. You hate the guy. You can't, you can't enjoy that. And they, 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 their personal hatred should not move. You should not help. I mean, you would have this guy lose his job. Nobody else? Anybody? What are you saying? The, the idle chatter. Idle you know? chatter. Idle chatter. Bop, 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 bop. It's a bad thing. Why is it bad? Because you could have spent the moment saying something beautiful, something beautiful, something uplifting, something helpful. But instead, you know, I always give you all my famous examples of Bible chatter. Nobody said, "Hi, how are you?" Nobody means how are you? <laughs> Nobody. Everybody says it. I don't know. How are you? I'm just fine. I'm miserable. You want to know why? I don't want to know why. Yeah, you know, I guess. <laughs> the biggest joke is down. How are you? It is the three most misused, abused words in the English. Like, how are you? How are you? I'm miserable. What are you? I'll take 20 minutes of my miseries. <laughs> right? But nobody wants to do that. So why do we do that for? Maybe, hi, I hope you're fine. A little more realistic. So, uh, we have to uh, 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 not say foolish things. When people need to make chatter, how can we do that? So, we're sitting, Shiva, me and my brothers, and we're breathing in the and people come in. And um, some people, you know, I sat here. Sunday morning, everyone shut a week ago, a few hours, and then some people came in. Um, what are you supposed to say? Walk the moment of life. And uh, uh, most rabbis uh, say that you should say nothing. 
कर सकते थे So why is it something stupid? <laughs> why is it something stupid? Well, it's not entirely true. You did say something very beautiful. Why did? Yes. Well, I'm very great. All this. Right. Right. Yeah. Very well, basically, basically, the principle is is that. The people that are visiting the morning should really not open conversation and wait for the morning. So that's, that's, the, that's the proper protocol in Judaism. Um, so that's uh, idle chatter, really is. It's almost sort of a, a betrayal of God's gift. God gave me a beautiful gift of communication. Being able to say something, maybe it's profound, maybe it's learning, maybe it's Torah, maybe it's information, maybe it's wisdom. Maybe it's just kindness. Like blah 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 blah. It's this. I'm so yes, what are you saying? Um, what is the meaning of that term confession of the heart? Say again? Confession of the heart. Confession of the heart. We stand before you through a confession of the heart. Oh. Confusion. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I thought you said confession. What is the sin of confusion? <laughs> Thou shalt not be confused. That's a law of the Torah. What's the Torah telling me to do? What am I violating? Torah telling me take your head straight. Yes. Why this confusion? Why this challenge? Life is very difficult. And then you make stupid decisions based upon your confusion. Well, I was all mixed up that I didn't know what to do. So that, and then you did something else. Thou shalt avoid confusion. Try to avoid it. Think of things too clearly. And therefore, think. Do we all commit sins of confusion? Um, how do we try to avoid it, which we're supposed to, by the mandate of our religion? The answer is do your thinking. Uh, maybe take notes on your thinking. Maybe consult with somebody. Maybe uh, you can't solve a situation. Talk to someone, call your rabbi, call your friend, call someone who's you can confide in. Um, so you'd be able to. to, to uh, um, Find some clarity. What is clarity? Clarity is where to see things clearly. What is seeing things clearly? The Hebrew word for seeing is ro'er, to see. I mean, ro'er, to see. So we have another word called yir'ah, which means to fear. Seeing is fearing, fearing is seeing. If you're seeing something clear enough and you know the pitfalls to avoid, then you have. A certain proper caution of fear. Do we have fear of God? Yes. What's fear of God? Clarity. God is real. God is true. That's why I pay attention to what he says. That's called true fear of God. God is real in my life. I have clarity. Nine out of ten people who are not religious or don't believe in God or sure of God, they're confused. Our job is to avoid confusion. Life is full of pitfalls, which can cause confusion. The way to avoid that is to work and fight for clarity. Think things through, consult, ask, find solutions, but be able to, not, don't, don't stay with the confusion and say, I give up. That's, that's confusion. And that's sin. Anything else? Any more points? Anything that uh, strikes in? Yes. Harsh speech. Harsh speech. Harsh speech is really oppressive speech. Harsh speech is when you tell somebody off. 
Far speech is when you uh, insult somebody. Far speech is, I mean, does this guy need to be told? Yes. What? Does he need to know a message that he's messing up, he's doing the wrong thing? Yes. You tell your child to do a task. Your child goofs on the task. What the hell? You did the wrong thing. It's so simple. Does the child accept it? No one accepts the regret in the best. No one wants to be told off. So you can correct without telling some more. Our speech is a very, very cruel thing. And therefore, I confess the sin that I was harsh at one time or another. I really spoke to someone inappropriately and hurtfully and caused tears or caused depression or caused lack of self-confidence to someone's dear to someone that's far away from you. <laughs> the point is, is that I wasn't careful with the way I said what I said. You're right, he messed up. He did. My father was an English He was uh, pretty harsh. <laughs> and um, and uh, I would uh, oftentimes disappoint him. And I tell the story we told it earlier when we were reading about the one time we were building a sukkah. My father, of blessed memory, was a very, a very talented with his hands. He loved to build. And uh, we were building this sukkah. I tell you, it was it was strong as Fort Knox. I mean, uh, this was the world, the world strongest sukkah that ever came in. Right. Anyway. So my father said, saw this beam. They took the saw, and I saw it not so strong. <laughs> and he got very upset with me. Saw the saw, go to right. I saw him. I saw him. <laughs> and then sweat began to come off my brow and go on to the wood. Father saw the sweat and said, Son of God. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but he should try to stay away from harsh speech. Really, try to be straight, but at the same time, be uh, considerate. No one likes to be told that. Anything else? Are we all good? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so now I have to get <laughs> back. You didn't give me anything. Really. Give me anything. Yeah, give me one, pick one. Give me 10 seconds. Um, dying. So the sin that we have sin is in the hobby eyes. 40 eyes. <laughs> how many times have you seen someone? <laughs> how many times have you seen someone really want to put somebody down? Oh, man. Uh, oh, <laughs> man. 40 eyes? That's what? Right. Oh. We might also figure it out. What a bore. What an idiot. And then he tells you a joke, which is absolutely stupid. Oh, man, this guy went to war. What? That's what he was. He made you off the war, but you can't do it. <laughs> um, uh, I might uh, uh, mention also um, that um, uh, one of the things that um, that is pretty important is the one uh, in 94. Uh, paid number uh, number uh, uh, seven. Um, no, that, that we did that harsh speech. Uh, number um, we did that. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, the one that, the one that's important also is the one about showing contempt for parents and teachers, and not respecting properly enough. That's really important one to remember. And the one after that's called the sin of desecration of Hashem's name. The sin of the desecration of Hashem's name is where you um, have caused other people through maybe an, an improper action to really feel, get a bad, get a bad taste of religion, a bad taste of God, because you were uh, somehow or another, you just portrayed it in, and portrayed yourself as a religious person doing something really uh, inappropriate. And it, it reflects bad about, about Hashem. And it makes people want to run away from it. There's another one over here towards the end of the page, 95, which talks about um, uh, the, the, uh, the sin of, um, of commercial dealings. Have to be honest in business, folks. 
Gotta be honest with you, empty great. Really do. It's really important. You can't, you can't cheat. And you can't steal. I mean, uh, you gotta be honest in your drinking and, 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 your, and your feelings. Um, uh, the, the one there about an interest and extortion, forcing people into, into deals that they don't want to deal with or whatever. Um, I might also point out to you the uh, pro prohibition of, um, uh, of uh, throwing off your yoke on 97, which means I don't, I'm a little tired of all this religion and all this rules and all this, I'm just getting a little overbeaten by this. It happens. But you have to fight against it. Uh, and trapping a neighbor. Um, forcing someone into, pushing someone into something he doesn't want to do. How about this one? A begrudging eye. What a begrudging eye is? You're doing well. And I'm jealous. And I begrudge that you're so happy. And I begrudge that you're doing so well and so successful. That's pretty, pretty nasty. Um, the gossip mongering you can see there also, um, baseless hatred, um, and, and these are the base, this is the basic confession. So let's begin the evening service. We'll call Nidre back on page 59, and the service begins. The rabbis come out, rabbi here, rabbi there with two toes, there's the chazim, and he goes through the formula all vows and prohibitions. And oaths and consecrations and vows and conan and conos and equivalent terms, all vows and swears and prohibitions that I made from last Yom Kippur to this one and from this to the next. We regard them all as we regret them. That they won't be permitted, abandoned, canceled, null and void. I go through this formula so that. I don't have to face God not having, not having kept my word. Because if I do, then God says to me, why should I accept one of your prayers throughout this entire different day when it's uttered by the same mouth that made promises last year didn't keep them? Why should I trust you this year? And therefore, through this formula, all my broken promises have become null and void. So my mouth is clean. And now I can begin to beseech Hashem with some degree of legitimacy. And so with that ceremony done, um, we'll say Shekhyano on the bottom of page 61. Thank you, God, for giving me a life for this year. That is how you uh, now turn to page oh, what I'm talking about. Uh, Oh, it does. So, sorry. Page 38. Now, during this 40 minute or 20 minute interlude, depending on what show you're in, you want to say this prayer. Uh, this prayer is a personal sense of real personal interconnection with Hashem. It's done in the synagogue, but everyone is so, so private into themselves. It's an entire congregation of 250, 300 individuals. This is a real individual, this prayer. And it's a prayer that talks about how God created the world, created uh, the human being, created the potential for good, the potential for bad, and the blessings and the curses, the good and the evil, and the recognition that I have not been up to par. I've done a lot of wrong things. And... Um, uh, I look at all my different organs in my body and say oh, how much I get wrong with each and every one of them. It's my mouth, it's my ears, it's my eyes, uh, my head, my hands, my feet. And then we come to page 40. And on page 40, you will find the paragraph that is recited in order to obtain forgiveness, or to grant forgiveness, I should say, to all others. This is the most important part of granting forgiveness to everyone who ever sinned against me, hurt me in any way, shape, or form. I forgive you completely, unquestionably, without even the slightest hesitation. And this prayer, if it's said by everybody, then we all gain forgiveness. So you really want to be part of that. 
You don't want to forgive it. You don't want to forget it. So that's the prayer. Uh, and that's where it says that the behest of the Chavetz Chaim, the following paragraphs recited here. And if you see the commentary on the bottom, um, on page 41, on the right hand column, it says the placement of this paragraph. The original text of Philosaka, the declaration appears, this declaration appears towards the end. However, the Chavetz Chaim urged that it be moved up because. Um, because, ah, uh, oh, turn the page. Because many people do not have time to finish this prayer. And the result is they fail to recite this very important declaration of forgiveness. It's the bottom 41, the bottom of 43. Publishers follow this counsel, and we've done the same. People who prefer the original Silasaka, we indicate the Lord, the original placement paragraph. The important point is to get this one in on page 40. That's Silasaka. Um, read a little bit maybe about the idea of Kol Mitre and Kippur, page 52. You can read the comment. You, can read, you read the, uh, uh, if you need it, if you want to get one of these, it's a, it's a great thing to take, to have. The Yom Kippur, the, the, the floors are all full of it. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, nullifications and, and other commentaries and teachings that you can do and study during this 40 minute interlude. When that's over, the evening service begins on page 66. Evening service is like every other evening service. Two blessings before the Shema, two blessings after the Shema. The two blessings before the Shema found in 66, 67, and the next one at 68, 69, and then the Shema. And an amazing thing happens with the Shema. What is the Shema? The declaration of our belief in God, that's right? Declaration that God is one. Only Israel can say that. No one can say that. The nations have God and whatever else they do in their lives. We don't. We're holding God. So therefore, we say, Hashem Echad, God is one. Only one, only one of that is in my life. That being the case, um, this is from the Torah. But then the very next pass, uh, the one liner, it's not a prayer in the Torah at all. Ruch Shem Kibol Machutom Yalom Blend is not in the Torah. It was inserted by Yaakov Avinu on his deathbed. When Jacob historically was dying, he had sons gathered around him. He was worried that maybe some of his sons were not, were not following the proper path. And so his sons assured him, and they said to him, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. We all believe. And he was grateful. So he said, this to look Shem Kilo, Machuto, about prayer, that's not the place of the God. But he stole it from the angels. The angels say it's prayer, not us. So when we say it, we say it's often. Because you have the right to it. So we say Shema out loud, look shame to all of us. But if you look at your prayer book over here, what does it tell you to do go shame to all now? Aloud. How come? We're angels. And they were angels. Here. This one day we're all angels. Not physical. None of them are not physical at all. It's all our souls, all angels this day, all spiritual this day. And we can join the angels and scream out, Baruch Shem, Kibbal, Malchotov, Yolam, Boed, without hesitation. And so we continue the Shema, first paragraph on page 70, 71, second paragraph 70, so it continues on, and the third paragraph ending at 72, 73. The after Rocha begins. Um, of course, the after bracha is the uh, uh, beginning at the bottom of the page, goes on to 74, 75, the second bracha, and we're ready to start the Yom Kippur Amidah on page 78, 79. And when we do the Amidah, we all remember that the rules are to step three steps back, three steps forward, and three standing, the feet together, and to recite the, bracha, the blessings, starting with the blessings of the patriarchs. In doing the blessings of the patriarchs of Avraham, Mitzvah, and Yaakov, we add something that is not generally there, and that's in bold. And that's called Remember Us to Life. But when we move on to page 80, once again, we add another thing to the second bracha. We even enlarge the third bracha as we move into 82 and 83, concluding 
with the name of a God, an 85. Blessed are you, Hashem, the Holy King. All year long, we say the Holy God. But during these 10 days, we say HaMelech HaKadosh. The Amidah continues with the identification of Yom Kippur throughout 86, 87, 88, 89. We conclude the Amidah. Uh, the extras are added on page 90, 91. To strive the children, <coughs> your children for the covenant of good life and write us in the book of life. And the confession begins right after. Well, if the confession is done, there is some extra prayers that are being recited by the congregation, uh, starting with 102, and the ark is open. The ark pretty much stays open the entire time during this. It's not really a repetition, but it's like extra prayers that are added for Yom Kippur. These prayers will be followed each and every time by the recitation of 13 attributes of God's mercy. So which everyone stands, and you'll find after the int int introductory prayer on 84, on 104, 105, you'll find the introduction to 13 Midos on page 110. And once again in bold, the 13 attributes of God's mercy. Hashem, Hashem, God, compassionate and gracious. Slow to anger, abundant in kindness and truth, preserve, pers, preserver of kindness for thousands of generations, the giver of iniquity, willful sin and error. Here you go with those three ones again, right? Um, and this goes throughout the night. And then um, we conclude with the, uh, um, the, uh, a constant refrain of the 13 attributes, and the ark is open on page 127. And the confession begins on 132, 133. Now we've done the confession twice tonight once in the private Amida and once in the repetition by the, by the congregation. Yom Kippur is over. Um, home, get to sleep early, come as early as you can in the morning. The morning service begins um, on page um, regular morning service with the introductory blessings uh, on page 250. 250. At this point, this is what's left for the rest of the day. I don't recall ever, ever going home with Yom Kippur. I know there's a break in between. It's good. It's a, it's a place to sit somewhere, a place maybe to rest a little bit. But uh, you're in true old day. It's an old day up there. And uh, the blessings begin with the regular way that we pray every day. But then, of course, we elaborate. We elaborate. Um, the early morning blessings are on 250, 251. The Pesuke de Zimra uh, and the songs of the hymns of praise uh, are found on page 282, 284. And these are, this takes a good, this takes, a, I would think the introduction to, 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 the, uh, to, the, to, the, uh, to the actual beginning of the service uh, would take about, Maybe about 40 minutes, maybe 45 minutes. So if let's say service begins at eight. You can imagine that the, the Chazan will begin about 8, 40, 8, 45, something like that, 8, 30 maybe. And so we're still in the preliminary stages here on 284, 285. The blessings uh, opening up the, 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 sims, the hymns of praise, the Pesuchia de Simra, continuing on with the dexterous hymns throughout page 290, 298. Uh, Ashray is found on 304. Rabbis say, if you say Ashray three times a day, 304, 305, you're guaranteed to share in the world to come. We then begin to sing the song of, uh, of the Jews leaving Egypt. And the, uh, this is all part of daily service, mind you, which we do every day. Uh, the song of, uh, of uh, when the sea was split. And uh, it was Yashir, right? 
three, four, three, and three, fifteen. Three, eighteen is the prayer of the soul of every living being. Nishma Skolchai, the extra soul that we get for Shabbat and for the holidays. And the chasm begins forty-five minutes later on three, page three hundred twenty-four. Ah, ah, amen. Next of the service begins with one word. Hamelen. The king sits upon high and lofty. And the service continues now, follow, following the Chazan to the Baruch Hu on the bottom of 324. Baruch Hu tells us we're ready for the Shema. The morning Shema. Again, surrounded by brachas. A bracha opening it. On page 326, going on till, a lot of this is uh, stuff to skip, I should mention, because uh, a lot of people don't want to interrupt with the bracha. And so we move forward to the second bracha on 342 and the Shema on 344. The Shema on 344. This is, of course, the morning Shema. Same, same three portions. Once again, Baruch Shem Kivod, out loud, or angels. And so we say the three portions, and we followed by the Amidah and the confession of 350. The confession and the Amidah of 350 is similar to what happened in the night before. And of course, we will say the confession on 3661. Kazan repeats uh, the Amida on page 366. In his repetition, there's a lot of congregation participation, particularly with certain responsive prayers uh, on 376. Three eighty-six. The big one is on three ninety. The ark is open. We sing God's praises. And we finally begin the Kedusha. Uh, actually, with some of this more, there's more sick. Yeah. Look at that. Three ninety-eight, four hundred. Loads of this is gonna take a lot of time. 402, and then the biggie, 404. 404 is uh, the acknowledgement of the judgment. The ark is open. All ascribe the crown to you, God who prepares man for judgment on the day of judgment, reveals depths in judgment, speaks fairness in judgment. During this particular prayer, judgment prayer, on 404, 405, I think you will find you'll find a lot of weeping in the synagogue, a lot of sense of, of the power and the awesomeness of what's going on on this day. The Kedusha, to sanctify God's name, on 406 following, and the repetition finishes up with the confession again, another confessional on page 422. The morning service is nearly complete. We have the prayer of our father, our king, of Ilu on page 436. While we're singing our father, our king, in a continuous refrain, over and over again, Avinu, our father, Malkinu, our king. God is our father, merciful, our king, strong, strict, and fair. That combination. As we move through this, we'll find at the bottom of 436 that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and two more on 438 that are responded to by the congregation, one after another, slowly. God, 
inscribe us in the book of life, the book of redemption, the book of sustenance, the book of merit, and the book of forgiveness. When this is completed, and the congregation is saying this, by the way, most of this is going to be with a lot of, uh, a very, these are very loud prayers. It's not quiet stuff. This is, you're going to, you're going to, the, the congregation will be reciting it and reciting it out loud in a, in a, in a, in a mirage of, uh, in, in a, not a mirage, in a, in a, uh, in a combination of voices, I mean, you, you'll, you'll feel, you'll feel the, the, the power and energy of these prayers. So not quite half the day is done. But we have to read the Torah. We read the Torah on page 442. We take out the Torah from the Ark. We recite once again the 13 attributes of Hashem's mercy. And we begin the reading on page 452. The reading is there a section in the Torah in the third book that talks about the Yom Kippur service. It talks about the Hanukkah, what the Kohen used to do in the days of the Beis Amigdash. Very descriptive. In this descriptive service, in this descriptive reading, I should say, uh, the reader reads from the Bima, from the Torah. It's reading from the Torah. We're taking the Torah out. And uh, he reads the entire story including the story, the, including the, the, the Torah's description, all from the Torah, the description of the Yom Kippur in 457. Uh, you can see that uh, at the bottom of 457, this shall remain to you an eternal decree in the seventh month. On the 10th of the month, you afflict yourselves, not do any work, um, and not the citizen, not the alien. For through this day, you will bear atonement and cleansing. Uh, for all your sins from Hashem, you shall be cleansed. Well, that really is the Torah's directive, Yom Kippur, right then and there in the, in the third book in Leviticus. It is a Sabbath of a complete rest. You afflict yourself, an eternal decree. Um, so we have a, a, an important part of the service to read the Torah to get to understand where the source of all this is from. When this reading is over, so uh, we now get back to the Muslim service, the additional prayer on page 486. We've already passed midday. I would say we're somewhere around a quarter to 12, maybe just nearly 12, and we're doing the Muslim service. The Muslim Amidah could be 20 minutes, could be 30 minutes, depends on you. Maybe the congregation prays a little fast. If you want to go slow, don't pay much attention. You do what you got to do. Um, you might have to make sure that you have to say your prayers. As long as you start with the congregation, it doesn't matter when you end. You can take as much time as you want. But the Amidah of Musa is very similar to the Amidah of the Shacharit. And as the same in the same editions, uh, uh, as well as uh, the confessional at the end of the service as well. And now the Chazan finally repeats, maybe it's 1230 or so, and he's repeating the Musaf um, on page 500 and uh, um, actually his beginning and repetition is pretty much the same. But what changes or what's in, especially significant about his repetition is on page 530. And we've discussed this before. On 530 and 531, we talked about this in the Rosh Hashanah service. It's repeating again the Yom Kippur service, the story of Rabbi Amnon, and the story of the prayer that he inserted in Musa before he died, and the story of how awesome this day is. The Sana Toikev, 530, 531. Um, as you read this, and realize the day is awesome and frightening. And God's kingship is exalted. Um, sitting firm on his throne with kindness and truth. Writing and sealing and remembering. Opening the books. Everyone's signature is there. And the great chauffeur is sounding. And the angels are trembling. Even them. It is their judgment. Turn the page and you realize 533, no one can really be vindicated in the eyes of judgment. All mankind will pass before us, before Hashem, like members of the flock. 
And then in the next paragraph, the actual determination of Rosh Hashanah is inscribed, and Yom Kippur, it is sealed. How many will pass? How many will be born? How many will live? How many will die? Will die at the right time or the wrong time? Wow, they will die. But there is hope because we scream out. Repentance, prayer and charity, remove the evil decree. And uh, with this hope, we continue to pray and call out to God on 535. You are the king, the living and enduring God. At this point, we believe the inscription is probably done. The sealing is probably done. And uh, we then continue with the Kedusha. And we ascribe to God His holiness on the top of page 537. And then we begin a very interesting part of the service. It's called, How Was It Done in the Basin? And that begins on page 560. Uh, yes, sir. Before you move on to that, quick question for you. Can you tell me, can you bring down for us, please, why the angels are nervous? Yeah, yeah. So, and everybody has the world is the world is famous, but everybody is. What are they worried about? <laughs> and they're not being judged. They don't do anything. They don't know the, the, the good or bad. They just do what they're supposed to do. They tremble. Because they understand the very essence of human existence is at stake. The very essence of the universe is at stake. The very essence of God's majesty is so overpowering, the angels tremble simply in his presence. And it's just not, it's not just because of the fear of the judgment, it's the sense of, of you know, coming face to face with God. And that, that causes trembling. And so the, uh, the coin continues. Uh, the way it used to be in the days of the base of Middash. And he falls on the floor. We all do too. In memory. He fell on the floor once on Rosh Hashanah. We'll fall on the floor four times on Yom Kippur. <clears throat> After the story of the service is over and what exactly took place, it's fabulous for, and, and, and fascinating reading. And the Chaza sings it, and you'll read it in English and then you'll get a, a full perspective of it. At that point, we then begin to tell a terrible story of the tragedy of the 10 martyrs. 10 great rabbis were assassinated and killed by the Romans, Roman pirates. And we talk about it in the service because it is taught that when you are moved to tears by the death of the righteous, then you are automatically forgiven by Hashem. And so, um, the story continues with the great rabbis, including the famous rabbi Shiva, and it's very, very, uh, very uh, descriptive the story um, and, and, and the tragedies and sufferings of the great rabbis um, who refused to stop teaching Torah despite the Roman decree. Confession is followed, and after the confession is over, once again another confession. Uh, there is a time. And I would think it's around, you're, you're around three o'clock in the afternoon at this time. And, um, and there generally is about an hour break. Maybe some truth will be longer or less, but about an hour break usually. We resume davening at 4 p.m. In resuming the davening at 4 p.m. on page 626, we'll daven mincha, the afternoon service, and we'll read the Torah once again. The reading of the Torah on 6.30 is all about the Prohibitions of immorality and the prohibitions of inappropriate relationships and uh, all the points of incest and uh, other perversions that go on uh, and, and the, the sense of, of, of how they really pervert uh, the, the, the purpose of creation and what God wanted from us. Uh, the story of the Haftorah is on 634. Anybody know who's all about? Anybody? And we have Jonah and the whale. Jonah. Jonah and the whale. 
Jonah is told by God, go to the people of Ninveh, get them to do tshuva. Jonah is a prophet. Not only is he able to understand God's message, he also is uh, required to do it. And he runs away. What are you thinking? Jonah, well, what's going on with you? So, of course, he runs away because he doesn't want to do tshuva. Why do you want to do tshuva? But they go, what's wrong with that? You can go, I'm going to do tshuva for bad people. You're right. But if they do, then it'll look bad for the Jews who are not maybe doing tshuva. And he's so concerned that the Jewish people shouldn't look bad, he doesn't want that to do tshuva. And it's so doing, he undermines God's judgment. And what does the Jewish God wants him to do? Your job is not to think about a cat, uh, considerations. Your job is not to think about what's the best interests of the world or God or the Jewish people. Your job is to follow God. Fail simple. Cut to the chase. Not rocket science. So he runs away on a boat. And why is he on a boat? Because it is taught that God will not reveal his prophecies on, uh, on, on the ocean, on the water. So he thinks he's getting away from God. And there is a big storm at sea. Everyone knows this. You know the story? Right? The storm. And uh, everyone is worried and nervous and frightened. And uh, they're, they're all, uh, all these sailors who are very hard nosed and Secular people, <laughs> they're praying they're, they're pray to their God, right? Um, but not now, we can say God's worthless anyway. So, what happens over there? They, he calls the, they see that this guy sleeps downstairs. He, he's sleeping comfortably. So, so, they go to the owner and they say, What are you doing over there? You sleeping while we're all suffering? We're all, all about to add a cat's eyes. And he said, I wonder the truth is all because of me. You want this boat to float and survive, and you guys survive. Throw me over. This is a great heroic position. You know, throw me overboard. Because if you don't, we'll all die. And they don't want to do that. Because even though they are hard-nosed sailors, they don't simply throw a, 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 a ship made overboard. They said if you want it to stop. So they throw them overboard and the thing stops. But they all become religious all those sailors. Well, they all get children. I imagine the sailor doing children, right? Meanwhile, the only gets swallowed up by a big fish. Right? What does it mean you get swallowed by a big fish? I used to do chaplaincy work in prisons. I go and then do the Jewish prisons give them teach them. And um, I remember going in, and as I passed through, and I was behind me, it goes click, and it was frightening feeling you can remember. Click, clang. It is a very frightening place. Prisoners, it's proficient. No, it's not dead. And uh, Yona in this sphere, uh, though I can tell you by the way, but I did get out, I'm here, you know, so I did get out of the prison. <laughs> uh, uh, Yona was told by Shen, all our day to watch out. So he gets out and he prays to Hashem with all his heart. My God, I promise I'll do what you told me. I was wrong. Forgive me, let me out. And God forgives. What a great story. So it's not over. Go to Ninveh. He tells the people, you got 40 days. Hello, it's these 10 days, right? You got 40 days. Clean up your act or you're dead. So the king himself gets off his throne, sits on the floor, puts on sackcloth, starts to cry, and the whole kingdom does chew. And Yonah did his job and he disappeared. 
So he goes over, he finds some place to rest outside the town, and um, he finds himself this little, uh, a little uh, bush to cover him, to shade him, right? And, um, mm -hmm. and, and it's as hot as 110 out there. And he's miserable. And he says, God, thank you. God says, why? You feel bad about that, uh, about that twig that was covering you? Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. You know, air conditioner. And Almighty says, you feel bad about a twig. You didn't do anything to make the twig in. Like a bush is shrubbing. I don't feel bad about the people that I made. I don't want to hurt them. I want them to be true. Don't you feel bad about me? The message is clear that the Almighty seeks our repentance. He wants us. It's a great story because it inspires us. Don't give up. We have a future. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. We're going to succeed. We're going to have a beautiful life because Hashem wants to love us. And so we're ready for the end of the day. And about 5.30 uh, or so, um, everybody is pretty much wilted. Or maybe adrenaline sets in. The last hour. Every energy you got, every ounce you got, you're filled with, ready to go. One more hour, God. One more hour, do night. And so... We start the Neila service uh, on page uh, 710 and uh, actually 712, sorry, 712 and 713, the last service of the day. So let's look at that bold print that we've been saying all day. Uh, that bold print and the, as we begin the Amidah 712 and 713, remember us to life, okay? Who desires life? And then says something very strange. It doesn't say write us in the book of life. What does it say? Seal us in the book of life. It's really And um, uh, we uh, have the prayers we go through, recognizing it as the final attempt to ask Hashem for forgiveness. And the books close, or the gates, I should say, close as well as the books. Amidah is over. And the Chazan repeats in 726 with numerous refrains to the 13 attributes of mercy. Hashem, you are merciful. Hashem, you are merciful. Over and over again. We come to the conclusion of the day with the, uh, by the way, folks, I want to remind you that, uh, that what we've done this service in about not quite an hour. It's going to take a whole lot longer on your Kippur day. I don't want you to get any <laughs> illusions, you know. <laughs> I have bridged this a whole lot. <laughs> but don't, don't, get, don't think you can do this in an hour. You know. Anyway, we are saying our Father, our King on 759. We've said this already four times today. We're going to do it. We said it two. This is our third time. But no, we did it. This is our fourth time today. We're going to do it. Our Father, our King, our Father, our King, our Father, our King. Once again, 760, our Father, our King. Seal us in the book of life. No, don't, don't write us. Writing's all over. So you can find the seal on 761, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Our Father King's down. Go to 12 to our Father, our King's 12, and you'll see our Father, our King, seal us in the book of good life. Not write us, seal us. Our Father King, seal us in the book of redemption. Seal us in the book of sustenance. Seal us in the book of merits. Seal us in the book of forgiveness. And we conclude the Avinu Malkeno on 762. 762, 763, we conclude today. And in conclusion of the day, we have three, as you can see in bold, lines to say, and we scream out at the top of our lungs. Shema Yisrael. I don't know, Eloheinu, I don't know, Yafod. Give out to Hashem. He is the one and only. Do it once. And then we do the Ruch Shem Kavod Machikol Yavanduayat three times. Again, out loud, like angels. And then we do the last three words of the prayer of the 
we have given service. The Lord is God. Hashem is God. And we do that seven times. And in doing that seven times, in the declaration of God, what we really are doing is we are ascending ever so slowly to Shema. And up and up and up to the seven heavens. And at the final time, as we say, the final things of people are, the, the, the synagogue is, 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 is completely uh, enclosed with, 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 the, with the screens and the, and, and, and the loud voices and the cries. The Lord is God, Hashem is Lord, Hashem is God, seven times. And then ever so slightly, as you, uh, as you uh, finish this uh, seventh time, you come down and you just open your eyes and you're back on earth. And you survive. And um, the service being over, the Kaddish in 764, and the uh, chauffeur will be sounded as the conclusion of the day. 765 and the wall screen right next to you. New kippers will. And nobody's going anywhere. You would think, oh, starving. And nobody's going anywhere. First of all, you're all just all right, let's really see. exhausted. All right, out here. The gun? Or do you have your ear in? in? No, you don't want to do that. Okay, so uh, I'm talking. Have it out here. Great, 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 wonderful. So, so. Uh, remember to close the door. Otherwise, close the door. Close the door. <laughs> so, and so, we're not going anywhere because we have to dub Margaret. We have to dub the evening service. It was a new day, right? What are you doing a new day when it's nighttime? You dub Margaret, right? So. Ready to turn the evening service and we'll finish up now. Weekday service, of course, because it's weekday and Kip is over. And when we finish the Yom Kippur service, when we finish the, this evening service, we're still not going anywhere because we have to go outside and sanctify the new moon. Finish the right? And then when that 